Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. Sandy's in the house, Sandy Kreisberg. And we have uh, Perry Teak, who is aiming for Harvard, NCI, and MIT, three of the world famous business schools. We are going to do here, or Sandy's going to do a grilling. Pratip wants a mock interview. Uh, just give you some basics GRE 324. It's got an eight out of uh, 10 in terms of GPA from the National Institute of Technology uh, in electrical and electronics engineering. And he currently uh, is uh, with the transportation company. And he's a manager in the bids and costs area, and he wants to go into strategy consulting or marketing. Sandy, yeah. take it away. Let me just clarify the GRE. What we got, yeah. he, he's got a 73 verbal and a 98 quant. It's pretty typical that the verbal is much lower than the quant. So usually what they look for in the GRE is 80% on both sides. Uh, I, I don't know whether, how many times have you taken it, Prachi? Uh Just once so far, Sandy. You, you've got a tough choice. Do you think you could do better? Uh, so basically, you know, I was taking GMATs before and then my score reached a plateau of 660. And that's when I switched to GRE. So I prepared for like a couple of months and I took GRE. I think I can take it again. It's the situation where, boy, if you could get... If you could get the verbal up, it could make a difference. You're a guy uh, on the border line at several places. And it, uh, I hate to tell you, tell people to take that test again, but it's one bad day that can affect the rest of your life. John, your, your views on this? Well, because you're aiming for Harvard and MIT and NCI, you know, you're, you're going for the top. So I would say go and take that extra step, try to improve the verbal score. Obviously your quant score is fantastic. Okay, yeah, I, I think I'll take it very seriously, yes, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's our tough love. Now now comes our tougher love. We got, <laughs> we got tough love, tougher love, and then you know we uh, walk out of the room. Okay, so very often the first interview question is, imagine it's the first day of class, could you introduce yourself to your classmates? Yes, absolutely. So hello, everybody. I am Pratik. I uh, come from a very small city in India called Alwar. Uh, I have finished my graduation in uh, electrical and electronics engineering from NIT Warangal, National Institute of, Institute of Technology, Warangal. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, so how's he doing? I think he's doing well. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost. Let me give you some advice. I, in your case, I would go backwards. Okay. I would say, because uh, uh, your, your, your current students, they care, about, they care about two things, where you're working now and where you went to college. And, and there's an implicit third thing, which is what can you do for me? But that happens over time. Mm -hmm. uh, this, it's important to get this down, particularly in your case, because uh, it, although... Uh, Alstom, is that the way it's pronounced? Yes, it's called Alstom, yes. Alstom, it's a big company. Uh, a lot of people haven't uh, heard of it. Let, let's start with that. Hey, how are you? Uh, could, uh, you know, I, could you tell me about Alstom? What is it and what do you do there? You, you really have to have this down, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at Alstom, currently, I am working as a bids costing manager which is basically managing bids. We basically ensure that we have a very clear- uh, you, you, this, is, this is critical. You're lecturing, you're not talking. This is absolutely critical. It, 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 it's more important than anything else. You have to be able to have a conversational tone. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing mm -hmm. is you're talking a little too fast. You sound a little nervous, even if you're not. And you're just banging out a lot of information. Okay. They just, what, what they really care about is your ability to explain something you should be able to explain. You don't have to be thorough about it or complete. You just have to be, uh, give a fundamental understanding to people who don't understand what the co company does. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Byrne, do I have your... Uh, 
Yeah, and I, I think I think right off the top, you want to say what Alstrom does. It's a global transportation company. Yeah, no, let's hear it. I'm I'm kind of curious. You know, with like I don't know what it is. Fifteen and a half billion dollars in sales and over and seventy four thousand employees. You want to get that out there? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, can I take a second try? Yeah, please yeah. do. Hey, hey, okay. hey, hey! Glad to meet you. Uh, I, I don't know your company, Alstom. What what is it? Could you tell me what it is? Yes, so Alstom is a French giant which manufactures train. We are into this uh, sustainable mobility where we manufacture different sort of trains like metros, trams, high-speed trains. And Alstom, we have around 74,000 people. Alstom recently acquired a big other uh, manufacturing giant of trains, uh, which is called Bombardier. And now we are 14 billion uh, purchasing uh, revenue company. So at Alstom, I am responsible for bids under costing. I basically ensure. Let me just interrupt. The fact that Alstom manufactures trains, that's the stuff that runs on the tracks. Yes. Did I miss that? Is that on your resume? The name Alstom is there. I'm not sure if I mentioned trains. Do you think that's an oversight? Could be, yes. Well, Uh, it defines the company better than transportation, you know. High-speed trains, metros, monorails is what the company does, really. Yeah, that's exactly what the company does, yes. I mean, it used to be in the uh, power business as well before, but the yeah, power okay, business... Blah, blah, blah. Let's, 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 for purposes of the peanut gallery, and you, my friend, okay, this, this is critically important. You got to flip and say what the company does, all right? That would be looked at as... Okay, I'm going to calm down. That, that would be looked at as a, a major oversight and possibly a uh, you know ding a ding creating oversight. Uh, Sandy, if you see in my resume, if you see I've mentioned in the buyers and the tenders very clearly that responsible for metro tenders, so metro trains tenders. So I do mention it, but maybe not as clear for 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 business schools. I, I will make it clear for them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you don't have to belabor it. Just say it's a global fifteen billion dollar company in you know, that makes high speed trains, trams, trams, and metros. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's it. Bingo. Okay. No more. Definitely. Okay. How would you introduce yourself to your classmates? Yes. So hi, hello, hello everybody. I am Pratik. I come from India. I work with Alstom, which manufactures trains. It's a fifteen billion revenue generating company. Uh, we have different product lines, basically, where we produce metros, trams, high-speed trains. Uh, We are very famous in Europe and East Asia. Uh, There are a few projects that we also do in US and North America and Latin America as well. In Alstom, I've held so far five positions, uh, three of them in India. Yeah, you you can't go through that in an introduction. People people don't care. They just want to know what you're doing now. They want to know what the company does. Okay. Yeah, one, thing I like from, what, one thing I like that you did, you went away from in the second introduction was the fact that you're from a small town in India. I, it's just a nice little detail. It's just a few little words, but uh, to me, it got my attention. Okay. What's your, um, could you tell me what you're doing now there? Yeah. So now I'm like in this transition phase where I am partly doing the global business process bit and moving to the bit team because this promotion just happened very recently, a couple of months back. So under global I'm, business, I'm lost. Process, you got. You're not framing. You're not framing it. You got to say exactly what you do. I analyze the cost of big contracts in blank countries, something yeah, like that. I'm, I'm the bids cost manager. What that means for you, liberal arts majors, is. You know, Alstrom is a is a company that sells high ticket items, notably trains. Okay, so you know when you're making trains, there's a, <laughs> you got to buy a lot. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> it costs, yeah, you got to buy a lot of things, including you tell me, you know, seats, carriages, pistons, engines, maybe even tracks. Okay, so we're always purchasing high ticket items. And my job is to analyze, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get us the best deal by analyzing who uh, the, 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 the deals offered by our, uh, the people selling us stuff, vendors. Yeah, I think my approach- That's what you're doing. 
Yeah, I think my approach was to name the position and then explain what is happening under and what am I am I doing there. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I don't care. That. You know, uh, that's that's my view on things. You can stick with your view. Uh, I, I don't mm -hmm. think I think your view, given the fact that people don't know the company, your view is too much information presented mm -hmm. in a lecturing robotic kind of way. Okay. You, you've you've got to spend a lot of time in the beginning of your real interview explaining what Alstrom is, what and what you do. Okay. Uh, if the interviewer is nice, they'll keep they'll keep following up. If they're mm -hmm. not nice, they'll just go, yeah, you get on a train out of here, pal. One of your own making or somebody else's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is another classic question, and it's tough for people to go to NIT. Before I ask the question, tell the folks out there what NIT is, National Institute of Technology. Uh, NID, yeah, as you said, it's National Institute of Technology. It's a similar, uh, I think people know IITs. It's a similar way NIDs are there. Uh, it's just that bunch of IITs are better ranked and then there's NIDs. IITs are more uh, India-based and then NID is state-based. So there's an NID in every single state in India. And then IITs is not everywhere. There's like, you know, a bunch of them. Okay. Um, good. So here's a question. Could you tell me about your decision to go to the National Institute of Technology and uh, pardon my pronunciation, uh, what, however you pronounce that? Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, my score allowed me to go to IIT Rutki and a bunch of NITs. I was not getting the best branch at that point in time in IIT Rutki. I, mean, IIT Rutki. I was getting okay, stop. Do you, do you think anybody understood what you just said? I, I didn't understand it either, to be honest. So what I would say, what I have to, what you have to say is something like this. It's a great school. It's highly selective and they're fantastic at what I wanted to specialize in. And I was mm -hmm. lucky to get in and I really enjoyed my experience. I would tell you, you know, you're talking to a sophisticated interview from a business school who knows the system. I, I would, I would almost start with that as being tacitly known. As you know, I would answer the question this way. As you know, college admissions in India is almost a hundred percent based on national exams. Okay. I took the national exam, and after I took the exam, my options were, what were they? Yeah, IIT Rutki and NIT were a bunch of NITs. Yeah. I, I, my, after I took the national exam, my options were IIT Rutki and NIT, uh, where, where you wound up going. And then, then you're perfectly, that's the perfect introduction to, and I chose Mm -hmm. NIT because what's the answer? Uh, NIT was uh, one of the top uh, colleges in all the NITs. They were offering me good uh, good course there, uh, and I really like the culture there in NIT uh, because my father has always always worked mostly in the south of India, so I was more accommodated to the south way of education. So I prefer to go there. I loved uh, I love the the small city where NIT is. So I just wanted to experience the entire entire graduation from NIT Warangal. John, you're great on that answer. I'm so glad you're I, here. I, I just went I've got on someone to little, bounce off of. Yeah. It just went on for a little too long. That's otherwise it was okay. good. Okay. I, I didn't well, agree with that. So the question move right on. How uh, long do you guys think like the normal answer should be? Like maybe like 30 seconds and less? 30 seconds is uh, a, a long time and, and it's acceptable. You, okay. What you should have is a thing in your head that while you're talking, there's a thing in your head that says, dude, you're talking too long. You mm -hmm. know that thing? <laughs> okay. You got to learn to pay attention to it. A lot of people, they're talking and the thing is going off and they're going, I'm talking and the thing is going off. I'm doing two things at once. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving on here just because John's getting bored, but 
<laughs> no, I'm not being bored. <laughs> but let me tell you, the stuff we've done so far is absolutely critical. In terms of your preparation, I would prepare on this almost exclusively. I don't care about some random questions about who's a leader you admire, but we'll get to that. This is crucial stuff. You've got to be able to explain your company. You've got to be able to explain your career there. You see, you've been there. Uh, you graduated the NIT in 2016. And you, four, you've only four worked years. For, I thought it was four years that he's been at Alstrom. Two, six, six. In fact, six and a half years. There you go. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, so here are some classic questions they ask about uh, uh, college. What was unexpected when you actually went there? I think this is going to sound a bit funny, but then the, the college was very, uh, there was a lot of students who were very politically uh, uh, active, which was uh, something to... the college was, it was a lot of political activity. Yeah. They were too, you know, in a, who were, who were the parties? I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, college political activity. Is it, is it, what does it circle around? What issues? Uh, so actually the college political parties, they were supported by the normal state government parties, which was something which I was not expecting at all. Uh, at that point in time, the state of Andhra Pradesh was going through a division into two parts. So Telangana, which is now a new state. And at that point in time, it used to be Telangana plus Andhra Pradesh. So there was like a lot of activities regarding this uh, this, this concept uh, in the in the college. Yeah, and that was unexpected. Did you did you wind up getting uh, joining that? Uh, no, no. How come? Uh, I think I wasn't able to connect with this entire concept of the division and then people actively participating in political parties when they are part of a college which is engineering related. It took me time much longer to understand that it's pretty normal and then it's actually very interesting. You kind of saved yourself at the end. So if the question was how come you didn't get involved in this political activity and the answer was I don't believe kids in college should get involved in political activity. I think they should just sit in a room and read a book their whole four years and talk to their friends. That's a deadly answer. Okay. I just want to make that clear for the peanut gallery. But that's what you started out saying. Uh, I, I noticed you um, spent a year at the Czech Technical University. Could, could you tell me what... Uh, how that, that's a year abroad, uh, an exchange student. How, how did that uh, come about and what did you think of it? I think this was one of the very unique experiences for me because this was the first time I actually boarded a plane. First time I ever traveled outside India. Uh, first time I, I studied with students outside India. So this was a very unique experience for me. Uh, I, this is also the very- That's all course. great, but what we want to know is- Yeah. You, it, it, just reading your resume, it, you apparently were awarded something called the Erasmus Exchange Student. Yes. So Erasmus Exchange Student is basically when you apply during your second year of college for this inter, uh, scholarship in, in, in Europe. Uh, and then that's you the, my friend, that's how you start the answer. If they say, how did this Czech Technical University thing come about? You go, I was interested in studying abroad. There's a program called the uh, Erasmus Exchange Student, which you can apply for your sophomore year. It's it's pretty competitive, <laughs> and I applied, and uh, I, I, I uh, lo and behold, was awarded the role. And so that's how I got there, and then uh, take it from there. So after that happened, what was your okay. year in uh, Prague like? Yeah, because I thought you were asking me this question that how was it to, to actually be in Prague? But that's why I, I think I, 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 I mistook the question. Uh, well, my year in Prague was very unique again. Uh, this is the time when I started taking business courses for the first time. So there was a course by uh, Professor Thomas Polomiski, if I remember correctly, on entrepreneurship. So uh, I, I did... Uh, uh, yeah, could you expand? But, but the, could you... Could you give a general answer? What, what Did you experience culture shock? What was it like in Prague? You said you'd never been out of India. What, what was that? What was unexpected? What was that like? 
you know, uh, you can be yeah. a general answer. You know, there's a lot of pollution there, but there's a lot of pollution in India too, or it's very crowded, or it's not very crowded, or it's a very wealthy city, mm. or it's a city dominated by communist activists, whatever the answer is. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I think it was very cold for the first, the moment I got out of the flight. That's uh, a perfect the answer. Lot. The first thing I noticed was it was very cold. I, I Somewhere <laughs> in my mind, I knew that, but it's a little different when you're when you step off the plane. That's a perfect answer. What else? Uh, I think there were a lot of white people for me for the first time outside India because I've not been around so many so many Europeans on the one shot. Also, the other shock was the, there were a lot of people from a lot of places uh, in technical university because uh, there was scholarship given to a lot of students and they all come to Czech Technical University in Prague. So I made a lot of friends from different parts of the world. There were Americans, there were people from France, Germany, everywhere. So it got me the chance to get accommodated with how, how different people think, actually. Good. And what, 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 ha so sometimes they would ask a question, what were some of your biggest takeaways? What were things that you were that was unexpected? What was different about you before you arrived and after you left? Before I arrived, I think I was sort of under dilemma about who I was. And then I, Prague is the place where I accepted myself because I am gay. And this is the place where I first got used to, or let's say, found happiness in myself uh, because I okay, saw... that's a lot powerful of answer. So, you know, Prague was a place where a lot of people were out, un unlike India. And yes. um, it, it was a place where I felt, whether it was the culture of Prague or whether it was being away from India, this is where I sort of came out publicly. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes, it's accurate. In fact, this YouTube video is going to be the video on which I publicly come out. Oh. Wow. Okay, so that, that would be a powerful answer for the prog part, which they will ask, okay? It's just, it just sticks out. It's an odd, it's an unusual choice. And, and what was it like going back to NIT after, for, for what looks like your final year? Yes. So in NIT is basically in your final year, you get different companies which visit the campus. So you have placements. So I was a bit worried about my placement. Uh, but during the same time, I applied for an internship because I think I was a bit scared to come back to India. Uh, so I just wanted to keep myself busy. Okay, stop. John, do you understand what he's saying? Yeah, he was a little scared to go back to India after feeling, you know, so liberated and Became, become, becoming himself in Prague. Yeah, that's acceptable. But And after that, but after, so you're scared and then you come back and what happened? Yeah, well, what happened? Uh, I applied for the college placements. I came out, to, I slowly started coming out to my family and my friends. So this was a major change for my final year. Okay, uh, let, let's, let's complete the, the coming out track and then deal with the college placement track. You're kind of jumping okay. in between. Yeah. yeah, stay in one place. Okay. So I... I um, the question is, what is your final year like? Yeah. Uh, because I came out to a bunch of people and in Prague, I was more comfortable with myself. So uh, after coming to Prague, after coming to India from Prague, I came out to my college friends first because before telling to my family, I still wanted to see how people in India and my friends would react to it, which okay, went- This is a question that, that they, they might ask, but it, it's only, it for, it's basically my own curiosity. Uh, at mm -hmm. this time, 19, 2015, 2016, uh, how big a deal is it to be gay in an uh, Indian collegiate environment. It was illegal that point in time. So I'm sorry, you, did you say it was illegal? Yes. So there was a section 377 in India, which does not allow for any sort of same sex uh, physical activity or marriages, etc. Well, that's worth mentioning. Yeah. Yes. I did not know that. Did you know that, John? No, I didn't. And that's, that's awful. I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, not anymore because in 2018 uh, things were better, 
And okay, then, but, I, but in, in yeah, terms yeah. of, that's all important, but it's something you've got to mention, it, just in terms of explaining your situation. If the question is, what was it like coming back? You go, well, at the time, being homosexual in India was illegal. It, it, it didn't become legal until 2018. So I had, uh, I was coming back from a country where I was out and where homosexuality was not only legal, it, it had a thriving community. And all of a sudden I arrived back in India and it's a crime to be a homosexual. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what, you know, basically. If you had to do your college, this is a very popular question. Uh, and I'm sorry if uh, I've even asked it before, it's worth asking twice. If you had to do your college experience over again, what would you do differently? I, you know, I think I was in, I was a very active uh, child as in my school time, but in my college, I think I did not participate in a lot of things. Uh, I, I think probably I was going through a lot in my head. Uh, but if I could change, I would really go back and participate more in extra co-curricular activities. Uh, I, I, I did not go to my full extent during my college time, actually. Yeah, why, good. That's a good answer. Why do you think that was? I, I think I was just not comfortable because the college environment was, I, I think there was a lot of things going inside me. I was just like questioning everything. I was confused yeah. about um, coming out about my sexual identity. Uh, and that was one thing. I was also very eager to, to be a good student. I wanted to get, I was eager, I was ambitious. And in India, you really need good grades to do that. Good grades really count. They count more in India than they do in most places, including, uh, well, they count everywhere, but good grades were very important. Tell me how you uh, started at Alstrom and... Uh, how did you come in contact with them? This, this is something you need. You need the Alstrom story after, you do, after you're able to define the company. How did you get started? Uh, so Alstrom was visiting our campus for a presentation and I met a few of the people representatives from Alstrom. I had a quick uh, conversation with them. I find them like very interesting, especially the fact that they were doing metros and metros were very new projects at that point in time in India, except in New Delhi. Uh, I, I found the concept of working for somebody who manufactures train very interesting. And this links to because my dad used to work for Indian Air Force and he used to work in South of India. 50 hours train. Okay, that, that's, uh, that's what you found interesting about them. Why do you think they hired you? Classic question gets asked all the time. You really need an answer. Yes. So I think during my interview, I had a very one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation with a domain director from India. And we really went into deep uh, dive into a discussion about doors in metros. I had seen a lot of metros in Prague just before I came back to India. And then he found it very interesting. So, so uh, why, why did you choose to go with those guys? These are class, you need answers. These are classic interview questions. I was interested in the company I was also, you know, I had an interest, a hobbyist interest in trains, and I like transportation. But what, we, but but other things that attracted me to the company, they had a a, a blank culture. I was I impressed by some of the people I met. I became, I, I formed a quick friendship with uh, someone in the hiring route. Uh, when I when I visited, I, I made it a point to uh, do some you know, homework. And what I read about the company was it, that's the answer. Can you give me that answer? Yes, for sure. So the, the company is very inclusive in terms of its culture. Uh, there's people are very open in terms of referring to everybody and you can go and talk to anybody. I really liked how exciting the domain director was during the interview, how excited he was to do a new upcoming metro project in India. Uh, also, um, I, I think I was very, uh, yeah, I think these are, these, these are the points that, I, that come to my head right away. Okay. John, you want to give him some advice on that or that, that's an okay answer? Well, I, I think that's a good answer. I think then you got to just stop it. And again, don't keep going on and on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the other thing about it is um, you wanted to work for a company that makes stuff. You know, in today's world, so few companies actually make tangible products, uh, and this company does. And I think that that 
maybe that's the appeal. Instead of saying trains are nice, maybe that's what it is. That it actually well, makes that, That's true. But also importantly is what, what attracted me was what, what they told me I would be doing. And what was that? Yes. Right off the bat, they told me that I'll be working for Tenders team as a tender sourcing leader. And that's very interesting because just imagine like India is coming up with a lot of metro projects in a lot of cities. So you Tender get this chance. sourcing leader. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, what, what does that, does that mean? mean? So the government of India or the state governments of India in different cities, they launch these tenders in which they invite these different companies to come and oh, okay. the Oh, okay. Okay. So we yeah, that's what I thought it meant. You, yeah, you, in terms of an interview, you, you've got to yeah, make was, that more conversational. Yeah, the government was about to initiate a major upgrade in its transportation needs. And that meant that there'd be a lot of exciting action that I'd be involved in, in bidding for those contracts. Right? Yeah, they told me I'd be involved in teams that are working on very high uh, value contracts, very important contracts, bet the company contracts. And it just seemed like an exciting part of the company to be at. It was a lot of team spirit. Uh, the, the preparing one of these tenders is a real intense uh, process that involves both analysis, political savvy, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Okay. Yes. Total. yes Good. So you really got to simplify, clarify, make it very personal to you. Conversational is the yeah. key word. The reason they... Yep. I'm going to I'm going to say it like I say this every week the reason they give for rejecting people if if uh you get a chance to ask them they say well the interviewer thought you sounded scripted okay mm-hmm. scripted is sometimes what the interviewer means is you actually sounded scripted and in your case yeah. there's a little bit of truth to that mm-hmm. yeah i you know so, like when i joined the alstom uh, it took me time to get used to this acronym way. And now I think it's so inherent in me that I really don't know like how to get out of it. And probably uh, just causing that problem. Well, yeah. that, that's a good realization. Now, let's hope we've, we've scared it out of you. We've, okay. we've, we've <laughs> changed the act. We've, uh, what, what's that? What do they use when you, we've exorcised the acronyms. <laughs> Exercise the lingo. Yeah. The other thing to bear in mind here is, look, you are in, an incredibly overpopulated part of the applicant pool. You're going to be competing with very sharp, very talented people. And um, I'll also say you should add a couple of other schools in addition to uh, Harvard, MIT, and NCAD to hedge some of your bets in addition to really working on how you present yourself and making yourself stand out in a very overpopulated pool. Good. Uh, let's just wrap it up with a very important uh, module, the future module. Okay. Could you tell me what you want to do after you graduate? What job would you want after business school? What job would you want after that? And where do you see yourself when you're a <laughs> geezer like me and John? <laughs> uh- <laughs> Uh, in past, especially three and a half years uh, after moving to Paris, m- most of my job has been into, you know, deciding processes and tools for people, uh, especially for procurement community. I think uh, now with this experience, especially if I get more and more knowledge from hey, I mean, uh, You've got to answer the question immediately. That's okay. advice I give every week. Even if you answer the question, particularly this question, what, what job do you see yourself getting after business school? I would like to be in strategy consulting with BCG or Bain. That's a perfect and answer in terms, of, in terms of answering the question. And then they'll say, why? You, this is critical, okay. man. Okay. I think I started with the why and I wanted to go to the main bit. Okay, I get your point. Good. I ask this every week. It's a critical piece of preparation. Can you point to someone whose job you want you know, in 25 years? I think in the new the, the PepsiCo chairman. Oh, the former chairman and CEO of PepsiCo. Yes. Does that make sense, John? Well, she ha- she worked in consulting before taking a corporate role at Pepsi. So she yes. is consulting as a stepping stone to get into, uh, obviously, you know. Yes. Okay. She was the beverage. 
it's with BCG. Okay. Yes. For, okay, moving right along. For you, for folks in the peanut gallery, you need to answer this question. You need to answer the question of whose job you want in 25 years. Then you have to answer the question of why. And then you have to answer the question of how you plan to get there. You need to have, it really would help to go into your interview with public figures who are leaders you admire, and also this question. And we're, we're now going into the last module here, okay? Who's the best leader you ever worked for? Critical question. Uh, there's a lady in our office uh, called Sudha Shankaran, and she is the VP for finance. And I absolutely love how she manages the projects. She's very focused, yet very humble and very kind to she works with. She's very straightforward what she has to get done. And very, 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 uh, 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 how do you say, result-oriented. Okay, my friend. You're, you're a smart guy. You've got a lot going for you. Good luck to you. We're for you. Thank you so much. Avita um, Zane. Take the GRE. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I <laughs>